I'm here with Ethan Budiono, uh, Division One college tennis player for the Uwe Pui Jaguars. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming on, Ethan. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, for my first question that I have for you is, what would be what was the recruiting process like, especially for a D1 athlete like yourself? Was it a lot different compared to other schools? Um, I'd say it's probably about the same. So I started looking at like near like the end of my junior year i'd say so it's all like the time when everyone starts looking maybe mm -hmm. a little bit later but mm -hmm. all i did was just uh start sending out my emails to schools i wanted to go to and i just found the coaches emails i would just send them an email mm -hmm. and then i would just have a i made a video a recruiting video and mm -hmm. then uh yeah i just waited for some replies back and just hope for the best so do you always yeah. Did you always know you wanted to go Division One? Uh, no, actually, I didn't realize I wanted to actually play tennis until like around my junior year. Because wow. freshman sophomore year, I was just trying to, I don't know, I was just kind of playing tennis. But then I realized I wanted to take it to the next level. Because why not? And play my whole life. So, <laughs> I yeah. mean, does it help having your dad's a pretty respectable is a really respectable coach in the eyes of the, the Milwaukee tennis community? Uh, What's it like having that as a kind of as your dad being a coach? How's that relationship like when it comes to having him as your mentor? I'd say uh, when I was younger, uh, you know, I get you know, I always get along on the court, but <laughs> since I was a little mature then. But since I, when I started getting older, I uh, yeah, I started realizing how great of a coach he actually was. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't really tell him that, <laughs> but. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just really nice having him as a coach. I mean, he's really busy a lot, but mm -hmm. when I get some time with him, it's, it's always great and helps my game out. So, yeah, it's, it's good. What do you think the difference is compared to, while well, my cuckoo clock goes off in the middle of our background, um, <laughs> what's it, what's the biggest transition you found going to Division One? Because it's definitely different compared to Division Two, Division Three. What would you say? would be the work ethic like is on a daily basis oh it, the time coming in is just a lot like from like starting in the morning like i wake up at like six sometimes even earlier we had to go to the weights room and do cardio or just different kind of lifts and mm -hmm. then and then we get to go to class for <laughs> for a little bit and then uh, we got practice from like noon to two or sometimes we double up and we do later in the afternoon as well and then after that we can do like a private with our coach or just do extra hitting because the courts are just whenever for our use. So yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of time. Yeah. But yeah. So how do you find that balance between uh, school and division one tennis? Um, well, at, at our school, we have uh, for our freshman year, at least what I have been able to do it is uh, we have uh, these like study table hour requirements where mm -hmm. we going to the library. Uh, for me, it was eight hours, a, eight hours a week. I mean, it's a oh, long wow. interview. Yeah, usually it's six, but I had eight for some reason. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, and then, yeah, so I think that was, that helped me out a lot. And then I can just, obviously I'm not going to log in eight hours again, but I can use that as like a, as like a little guide for the next three years. So I think just time managing really is the biggest factor. Would you balance. say that's the hardest part about being a Division One athlete is just balancing that time? Yeah, basically, because you had a I mean, school and athletics. I mean, yeah, just it's tough, but yeah, I'd say so. So when you travel, um, I knew you. Um, I was aware that you went to the ITAs in uh, what was it, Nashville? Yeah, the regionals. Was the in regionals. Nashville, yeah. What was that experience like? Because not many people are have that opportunity to show their skills on the national level. Walk us through that experience. Yeah. Um, so I. Honestly, I didn't really even realize how big of a deal it was, but we only had four guys from our team go, and then I was, I'm pretty sure I was the last guy that our, my coach selected mm -hmm. for us, and I was just pretty pumped. I didn't even realize until I got there, and I saw the saw the draw, and I was like, wow, this is, these guys are really, really freaking good. So, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, when I got there, I just, I was like, I played a Vanderbilt guy right away, and I was like, wow, this is, this is a really cool experience, and then um yeah I had chances to win the match and I lost but I mean 
after that, I was able to see all the other uh, main draw matches and seeing guys from like Kentucky and Tennessee, all these top ranked guys. It was just really cool, and hopefully, I yeah, I don't know. Just do you think? Uh, do you think in the future you'll have people looking up to you that way when you play uh, more regionals? Uh, that 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 was that's the dream. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, when I was watching those guys play, I was like, man, I want people watching me like that. But, mm-hmm. but that's the motivation. So I don't know, hopefully, but it's all about staying healthy. That's my biggest concern. Okay. Do you, Have you had injuries in the past? Uh, yeah, a lot of them. Like my junior or senior year, I was uh, getting a lot of uh, injuries. And then a lot of the injuries came up again during um, uh, sec- second semester when actual season was starting. Gotcha. So a lot of like lower back, knee problems, so mm-hmm. lingering stuff. So it's kind of annoying, but yeah, just yeah, doing that's, rehab, BT. That's, yeah, that's the part of tennis. Do yeah. you have that? Uh, do you have any of those problems kind of translated into col- uh, followed you into college, or is that just kind of stayed in oh, high yeah. school? No, no, they all fought like the back issue and knee. Actually, some knee problems, like new knee problems, came when I was college, but. The lower back has really been an issue, even up until now. Like I'm still resting a little bit more. I haven't really been like uh, practicing as hard as I wish I was, but yeah, it's wow, it's been tough. Yeah, but. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've you've done well for being for a freshman this year. You went six and zero in uh, number six singles. You went six and two at the five spot. What? How do you find that success at such a young age? Especially on the I don't D one team. Um, honestly, I just wasn't even like when I was out there. I just started. I didn't really have any expectations going in, and mm-hmm. didn't really know what to expect. So I was just I was pretty. I'd say my first the first match I played, I was really nervous. But once I got through the first set, it was just like I realized how fun it was. It's like it's so much better when you're playing on a team. Mm-hmm. Like in USA, like I don't know. I really didn't enjoy UST all that much. Yeah. But yeah, just playing on a team just made it a lot more easier and having guys cheer you on. It's just, I don't know. I just like when people are watching me play and then I feel like I'm able to, someone I kind of like want to show off a little bit, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> so yeah. I want to impress the people watching. So it definitely, definitely helped. So, so definitely more of a pressure player more than just have a calm environment around you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's always nice having a little calm too, but mm-hmm. When it, I don't know. I like the spotlight sometimes too. So definitely, definitely yeah. a chance to show off your skills. Yeah, and you did that when you beat uh, the twenty sixth player in the country. Is that correct against Notre Dame? And oh, you, Nathan Griffin. Yeah, 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 Griffin. Yeah. What was um, the, walk us through that uh, match? Okay, so I actually the um, previous uh, match we played Detroit Mercy, and that was the first uh, conference match, and mm-hmm. I actually lost didn't really play that well and I was super pissed so I kind of I don't know I kind of like funneled that anger into the Notre Dame match and I just I just wanted to see what I could do and then I got out there and I think I remember the first point of the match I was serving and I and I hit and I hit the net and it rolled over and I won that first point with an ace just like that and I was like all right this could be this could be a good day <laughs> yeah I know I ended up I was just super loose and um yeah, I don't know. I think the matchup was just great. And, uh, yeah, I was able to just work my ground strokes really well. I was serving really well. It's coming into the net, which was really important, that match. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't get over my head about anything. And, yeah, I mean, it was really – I had nothing to lose, obviously. I'm playing Notre Dame, right? So Yeah. Yeah, it was just – yeah, that was definitely my, my biggest win of the year. And, yeah, I don't know. I was just – I was really – I was really, my confidence just really boosted up after that. So it was good to take into the rest of the year. So would you say that was the, the pinnacle moment of your season or was that your favorite moment of the season? Um, actually, no. I had a, we played a, early in the year, we played a home match against Lipscomb. And mm-hmm. um, I was playing six against some against their guy. And he was also, when you're playing six, like most of the guys I'm playing are like, usually I'm like, I'm expected to win like almost all my matches at six, and yeah. that guy. I, I was I kind of underestimated that guy. I ended up losing that first set like six two right away, and mm-hmm. then I was looking around at every other match.
match and um i realized how close it was and then i realized that it came down to my match it was i think it was three three i think or mm -hmm. two it was three two or something like that and um when we were in a third set, and I, yeah, I was able to just focus in and kind of realize that I needed to win my match if we wanted to beat Lipscomb. So, took it to a third set, and we were in a, we were in a breaker, and, mm -hmm. um, seven point breaker, and, uh, we had, like, all the guys watching, and there was a home match, so, like, a lot of my, some of my friends were there watching too, and just the home crowd, and, um, uh, yeah, I ended up clinching the match, and, and then it was just, that was probably my favorite moment because you know all my teammates are like storming the court and, and just cheering and yeah yeah that was that was my favorite moment of the of the season but in terms of my best match Notre Dame so awesome that's what yeah that's what I love to hear yeah, so great. what's it like having a brother you can just beat on <laughs> uh, this still on the record uh, yeah of course <laughs> uh, you know. It feels pretty good now. I mean, <laughs> he's a great violin player. He plays violin really well. And yeah. I'm pretty shabby. At, or I'm pretty, yeah, I'm not very good anymore. So <laughs> I think it's good that we uh, we both got something that we can brag to each other about. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's definitely nice, though. And then, but, yeah. Not to, not to throw Austin under the bus. And for people that don't know, um, Austin's brother has been one of my good friends growing up at Xavier University. And, his brother, as we're talking to, uh, have always been competing. So every time Austin comes back to me and says, Ethan, just kick my ass, 6'2", six, 6'1". Six, it's, <laughs> it's interesting to see that kind of rivalry between brothers. Yeah. Uh, so I think my last question for you would be, um, what's the what would be your ultimate goal by the end of your four years at Ui Pui? Um, I'd say I'm trying to get the most wins in the men's history so oh wow uh, one of our guys just graduated and his name is david beasley he's definitely one of like if not with the best player that's like come through mm -hmm. and he i forgot how many wins he has total but it's like maybe like the 70s 60s maybe like close to like 70 and he was telling me it's like you know like you're on the right path to take me out here in terms of uh, the most wins so that's wow. That's my goal, and yeah, I don't know if I stay on track with how I did my freshman year. Then there's a chance. Obviously, it's hard, but yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, there's no pressure. You just feel like this is the ultimate goal you can achieve for your the program. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I'm just trying to, yeah, just do as well as I can. I mean, not many uh, schools were totally looking at me, so it was really cool that I, I got taken in by Curry. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ethan. Uh, we really appreciate having you on. And uh, good luck in next season. We hope to hear from you soon. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Thanks nope. for having me. No problem. I should.